رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Assalamu alaikum Hello students how are you all doing today I hope you are doing good and you had a wonderful Eid with your family So are you ready for today's lesson Let's start today's lesson To begin today's lesson I'm going to show you a picture so now you will see a picture on your screen. What can you see from the picture? We can see our planet Earth. We can also see hands holding the Earth, which conveys that we are protecting our planet. What do you think the leaves, plants and flowers represent in this picture? Leaves and plants represent nature and its resources, doesn't it? So, it's our duty to protect our Earth, our home planet. Let's see another picture of our planet. How is this picture any different from the picture that you saw just now? What differences can you spot from the picture? As you can see, on one side, it is bright, green and beautiful while on the other side it is dull, grey and polluted. These are two sides of our earth. Why do you think this happens? Who is responsible for the pollution and destructions? The answer is very simple. It's us, humans, isn't it? We humans tend to neglect the importance of conserving the resources of the earth. As a result, we face much more difficulties which are unavoidable, isn't it? By now you would have guessed that today our lesson is going to be something that is related to our planet. If that is so, you guessed it right. Bravo! Today we will focus our lesson on speaking. How do we step up our speaking game? So before we go on with the lesson, let's see today's learning intention and success criteria. Let's see our learning intention. Today we will be learning about the steps we can follow to prepare and deliver a presentation or a speech. Our success criteria for today is I will be successful if I am able to prepare notes to the given topic, organize my ideas in a chronological order, have a good posture and eye contact with the audience. We are all set to start today's lesson. Since it's a speaking lesson, let me share today's topic with you. As we have been discussing about our planet Earth, today your topic is also something related to our planet Earth. Are you wondering what your topic is? Let's see our topic for today. Your topic for today's lesson is My Planet Earth, My Responsibility. Have you noted down your topic? If so, let's check it again. What's our topic again? My planet Earth, my responsibility. That's right. So today you're going to do a speaking. In fact, prepare for speaking for this topic. What is your responsibility towards our planet Earth? Are we ready to plan for our speaking? If so, let's start. In order to be effective and confident speakers, there are certain steps that you can follow while you are planning for your speech or presentation. Let me tell you some of those. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you are going to do a presentation or a speech? The first thing would be a topic, isn't it? Like we have a topic today. What's our topic today again? Can you check your notes? It's my planet, my responsibility, isn't it? So we have a topic for today. Now, the first thing that you could do is, you can brainstorm and think about from where have I heard about information about Earth or anything related to Earth. Have I learned about it in any other subject, like maybe in social studies, in science? Where have I heard about the resources that we are using in our planet Earth. So, just 
Just brainstorm yourself and note down some points that you already know in a piece of paper. Can you do it? Now that we have written about what we already know, now it's time to move to the second step. Why are we moving to the second step? Because whatever information we have now is not enough for us to do a presentation or a speech yet. We need to find more information. So that's our second step. Find more information. Now the question is, from where are you going to find this information? You can find it from books. You can find it from internet. You can even ask an adult for information. For example, for our topic, my planet Earth, my responsibility, what are the possible information you could search for? You can search humans that are harming our planet and how, what are our responsibilities as an individual, what can we do as an individual to protect our Earth. It is very important to practice safe browsing while you search for information. So now I would like to show you how you could use your browser to search for relevant information. Now at first you're going to open your browser. It can be Internet Explorer or Google Chrome. Now in the Omni box where the cursor is, you're going to type Kiddo. Let's type Kiddo. And then we are going to click the first link. Let's see when you click the link, you will, it will lead you to the search engine. Now here, we are going to write something that is related to our topic. We are going to type in keywords. Now our topic for today is my planet Earth, my responsibility. What keywords can we type in here? We're going to type planet Earth and see what result comes up. Let's see. It is going to load a lot of information sites. You can see from here when you scroll down, you can see different websites that would lead to the information that you want about our planet Earth. Now let's click one of the links and see what information it is. Suppose the first link over here, it's a NASA science website. Let's see. Let's scroll down and see whether there are any information written. There it is. So now we can see there are some of the information given over there when you scroll down. So what you need to do is you need to read this information and check whether there are any relevant information that you could relate to your topic so if it is there what you can do is either you can copy the text that you want you can simply the, copy the text you can show a blue highlight like this you can simply copy it and then you can paste it in a word document or if you can't do that then you can simply write it in a notebook and here all the information that you collect from different websites. Now let's go back and try typing something else. This time we will type save the earth. Save the earth. Now as you can see from above there is uh, there, there are images you can search, there is news you can search, there are videos you can search. So when you click on this, you can see images, videos. Let's see what images you get. There you get so many images. So if you're doing a presentation, you can copy and paste these images that you like into your presentation. So this way you can collect information, images, even you can watch videos that are related to your topic and then note down the important things that you, important information that you collect from these videos. So I hope you have got some text to search from the browser and collect information. Now that we are done with the first two steps, we will move on to the third step. But before that, let's revise the first two steps. First, 
we selected our topic, we wrote down what we already know, then we found more information for our topic. Now, finding information is not only enough, is it? We, we will not remember all those information. For that, we need to make notes. So the third step is to make notes. Now, how would we make notes? Are we going to randomly write everything together? No, right? That will be so confusing. We don't want it to be so confusing, isn't it? So, what can we possibly do? We can organize our ideas and notes, isn't it? We can organize it in a chronological order. What would you want to say first? What point would you emphasize on next? So, order your speech or presentation in such a style. Now that we are done with the four step, let's go back and revise the four again. The first step is selection of topic where you brainstorm and check whether you can connect what you have learned from the other subject areas to this topic. The second step is finding information where you do your own research and find authentic information about the topic. Third and very important, have notes. While you research, keep noting down the important information related to the topic. Fourth, organize your notes and ideas. Remember to organize your information in a chronological order or a sequential order. As much as it is important to have good content for our speaking, it's also important to have good speech etiquette while you're presenting your speech or presentation. It helps to engage your audience in your speaking or presentation. Let's discuss some of the ways that we could make our presentation more engaging and interesting. The first thing your audience would possibly notice would be your facial expressions. So it's very important for us to express ourselves. When you're talking about something exciting, your face should show excitement. When you're talking about something that is of your concern, you should have a concerned face. So it's, it helps us to interact with our audience. Another way we can engage with our audience is always having eye contact with them. Now, if you have a smaller audience, like in your classroom, you can possibly uh, have contact with everybody. But if you have a larger audience, you can scan through the audience. In addition to that, we can also focus on our body language. We can focus on our body posture and pose while we are presenting. Instead of standing still, you can move around the room or you can use gestures using your hands. Apart from that, we can vary our voice and tone while we are presenting our speech. We can have a high tone, a low tone, or we can simply vary our voice while we are speaking. Last but not the least, we could always use gestures while we are speaking. Gestures are movements of hands, head, arms, or even your eyes. Let's review. While presenting, focus on facial expression, having eye contact, body language, gestures, and intonation. It is vital to have an interesting beginning and ending to our speech or presentation. Let's have a look at some of the ways we could do that. To begin with, you can ask the audience to imagine a scenario. For instance, you can start by saying, Imagine a world where you no longer get clean water to drink, clean air to breathe, and no fresh fruits and vegetables in your meals. Have you thought about that? What are your thoughts? Another interesting way to start is by using a relevant quote. For instance, here is a quote by Jane Goodall. She says, you cannot get through a single day without having an impact on the world around you. What you do makes a difference. You have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. Interesting, isn't it? Another way you could begin your presentation or speech is by introducing the topic. You can simply introduce the topic by briefly explaining the audience about the topic. 
You can also state a fact to begin your presentation or speech. For instance, Earth is the only planet in the universe known to support life. A living planet with abundant amount of water, trees and breathable air. Earth is indeed a very special place, protected from dangerous sun rays and meteorites from the atmosphere. You can ask a question before you start your presentation or a speech. For instance, related to our topic, you could ask, what would the world be like in the year 2050? Will it have enough resources for our future generation? Will it have clean water to drink? Interesting, isn't it? You can start with a storyline to make it more interesting. For example, I would have started by saying, on the other day, I went to the beach for a walk. What I saw from there devastated me. Instead of a white sandy beach, what I was looking at was a show full of plastics. It made me think that we as humans are being neglected towards our environment and our home planet. Now, let's look at some of the ways we can conclude our speech or presentation. Usually, we would conclude our presentation with a personal opinion, giving what we think about the topic or giving a short message to the audience. We could always give an advice about the topic that we are talking about, or we could simply summarize our points or use a short memorable sentence to conclude our speech. So let's review what we have been learned at first. We were learning about how to plan for our speaking, like making notes, finding information. And then we were discussing about what kind of speech etiquettes we could make use of while we are presenting or giving a speech. And then at last, we discussed about different ways we could make our speech more interesting by having an interesting beginning and ending. To polish your speaking, you could always add some essence to it by adding some quotes and idioms. It will give a good flavor to your presentation. Now that we have used so many ways to master our speaking, let's see whether you can remember our topic for today. So, our topic is My Planet Earth, My Responsibility. And now I'm going to show you a short video where you can see a person sharing his concerns regarding our planet. Are you ready to watch the video? If you are so, while you're watching the video, you can always note down anything that is related to your topic that you think you could use in your speech or presentation. You can also focus on how the person is using his tone, his voice and maintaining his body posture while he is presenting. Fun fact, planet Earth is 4.5 billion years old. Mankind, about 140,000 years old. Let me put that in perspective. If you condense the Earth's lifespan into 24 hours, that's one full day, then we have been here on this planet for Drum roll, please. Three seconds. Three seconds. And look what we've done. We have modestly named ourselves Homo sapiens, meaning wise man. But is man really so wise? Smart, yes, and it's good to be smart, but not too smart for your own good. Yes, we have split the atom. Yes, we build clever machines that navigate the universe in search of new homes, but at the same time, those atoms we split created nuclear warfare. In our quest to explore the galaxy, rejects and neglects the home that we have here now, so no, that cannot be wisdom. Wisdom is different. While intelligence speaks, wisdom listens, and we willingly covered our ears to Mother Nature's screams and closed our eyes to all of her help-wanted signs. 
Wisdom knows that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, so if we were wise, we would not be shocked when we see storms that are stronger than ever before, or more drought, hurricanes, and wildfire than ever before, because there's more pollution than ever before, more carbon, more trees cut down than ever before. At a record pace, we have increased the extinction of animals by 1,000 times the normal rate. What a feat. In the next 10 to 100 years, every beloved animal character in every children's book is predicted to go extinct. Lions gone, rhinos gone, tiger, gorilla, elephant, polar bear gone. In three seconds, species that have been here longer than us will be gone because of us. In this three seconds, in an existence shorter than a Vine video, we turn the circle of life into our own personal conveyor belt. Somebody, anybody help. We were given so much. The only planet in this solar system with life. I mean, we are one in a million. No, actually, scientifically, we are one in a billion, trillion, trillion. That's a one followed by 33 zeros. And I don't want to get too spiritual, but how are we not a miracle? We are perfectly positioned to the sun so we don't burn, but not too distant so we don't turn to ice. Goldilocks said it best, we are just right This paradise, where we are given medicine from trees Not coincidentally, but because like the song says We are family, literally Everything, every species is connected genetically From the sunflower to the sunfish And this is what we must recognize before it's too late Because the real crisis is not global warming Environmental destruction or animal agriculture It is us, these problems are symptoms of us Byproducts of us our inner reflection, loss of connection has created this misdirection We have forgotten that everything contributes to the perfection of mother nature Corporations keep us unaware and disconnected But they have underestimated our strength Contrary to popular belief, millions are waking up out of their sleep Seeing our home being taken right up under our feet we cannot allow our history to be written by the wicked, greedy, and loony. It is our duty to protect Mother Nature from those who refuse to see her beauty. Call me crazy, but I believe we should have the right to eat food that's safe. With ingredients we can pronounce, drink water that is clean, marvel at trees, breathe air free of toxins. These are natural rights, not things that can be bargained for in Congress. See, they want you to feel powerless, but it has been said that something as small as the flutter of a butterfly's wing can cause a typhoon halfway around the world. But when enough people come together, we too will make waves And watch the world into a new era Filled with love and connection Freedom for all without oppression But it is up to you, yes you watching this behind this screen To make the effort, because time is of the essence And only together can we make it to the fourth second Okay students, did you like the video? I hope you did and relate to the issue that she was talking about. You did take some notes, right? To relate it to your topic, think of the ways you as an individual would make a difference. You can come up with ideas and ways in which you can contribute to our home planet Earth. Jot down your ideas. Think of different activities that happen around you, which harm the environment us, our planet. Think of ways as a student, as an individual, how would you play your part in being responsible towards the planet? You can always present your speech in front of your family members or even in front of a mirror. Trust me, it really helps when you're speaking in front of a mirror. After presenting, you can always use a rubric to evaluate yourself. This way you can feel more confident. When you're done with the presenting, you would want to check how you have done it, isn't it? So, to check how happy you are with your presentation, you make use of the rubric that we can see over here. Rate yourself. If you think you did an excellent job and you're extremely happy with yourself, rate three stars. If you think you were quite okay and you could have done better, rate two. If you think you need to improve a certain area, you can rate one. Remember, one star here doesn't mean that you didn't do well. 
It's to let you know that there is an area that you can always excel if you try and put in a little bit more effort. So students, it's time to wind up our lesson for today. But remember, you can do your best if you give it your best. And all of you, even each one of you is a unique presenter. Remember that. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.